What's up my friends, welcome back! I'm here with another review on a new 3D printer that I've just received. But this is not the usual type of 3D printer that I review till now. As you can see it's not a DIY kit, it is ready to use directly from the box. It's very small and fits perfect on any office or workshop table. This is the new Wi-Fi 3D printer E180 from GE Tech. As you can see with a touchscreen and also Wi-Fi connection. So in this video we will see its main characteristics, get it ready and have our first print. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. The first thing that we will do is unbox the printer and see all the parts that we have inside. Inside the box we have this polyester bubble sponge protection, which is quite unusual since almost all the printers come in this compact foam. This is a little bit more messy since it leaves a lot of plastic bubbles everywhere. Anyway, inside we have of course the printer, in just one piece, and also some guides that will help us start printing. Next we have all these extra parts. Ok, we start with the usual blue USB cable and a power cable as well. This power cable is for the next part which is the power adapter. Since this printer has no heated bed, which is the part with most power consumption, we don't need a huge and powerful power supply as in other printer kits. So we only need this 12V adapter. Ok, so finally we have a micro SD card for direct prints, a spare tape for the bed, a small bag of tools and also an extruder spare part module, which we will talk about later in the review. We also have some PLA filament sample as always and this bag with metal parts for the filament support. I take everything out of the plastic bags and this is all that we have. Ok guys, now let's begin with the printer setup and after we manage to print something I will give you my first thoughts on this machine, parts I like and parts I don't. I first mount the metal filament support with some simple screws, two at the bottom and two at the top and there you go, I've got my filament support made out of metal parts. The next thing is to plug the power cord and turn the machine on. I press the power button and there you go, it's alive. So this machine is ready to use directly from the box, so let's first level the bed before we start our first print. I first make sure that the bed is physically almost leveled with these 4 corner screws. Now using the touchscreen menu we go through the level sequence, we have 5 points to level. We go to control, level and the machine will home itself. Then it will go to the first calibration point. Here place a sheet of paper on the bed and adjust the height. Go through all the steps and make sure the paper is neither too tight but neither too loose. Go up and down on the menu in order to calibrate each point of the bed and go back once it's done. Ok, now I set the temperature for the filament to 200 degrees since I will use PLA. I take the filament and insert it into the back extruder. Push the filament till it reaches the hot nozzle and a little bit of the filament will get out. Now we select the extrude button from the menu in order to extrude some filament and we are ready to go. On this SD card I've already uploaded a bench G code for our first test in order to compare results with other 3D printers. Insert the SD card on the back slot. Navigate through the menu and select print. I choose the bench G code file and start printing and there you go. The printer starts printing with no problems. Since this printer has no heated bed we should always use tape so the print will stick on it. I prefer this kind of tape instead of the blue one that they give us. Anyway let's see how this first print will turn out. Well it's not my best print ever till now but the quality is decent. Nice layers, no retraction problems and have in mind that this is the first print. Probably with more fine tunings for the G-code we could achieve better results. Here is the same file but printed with my dear Creality CR10. You can see the difference. While printing the printer isn't that loud but neither silent. 
I guess it's as loud as almost all the printers that I had till now, with that step motor sound while moving. The first print is being printed quite well. Actually, I'm amazed that the first print is getting this good. The speed is right, the filament feed is perfect and we have all the printing details here on the screen, where we could even change the temperature while printing if we need to. We could also check the printing status from anywhere using the Wi-Fi connection. Even on the street I can see how the printing process is going and change settings. Anyway, this is the final print which turned out great. Nice details, perfect layers and infill, no retraction problems and for being the first print I'm so happy with the results. Ok, so now that we have printed something, let's check this printer out. First of all, the bed is 14 by 21 cm, but the specs of the printer tells us that the printing volume is 13 by 13 by 13 cm. And let's don't forget that we don't have a heated bed, so ABS printing would be quite difficult with this machine. Despite that, using tape on this aluminum bed, the PLA print turned out great. So if you usually use PLA, this should be no problem for you. The bed has 4 rollers on the bottom part which makes the movement of the bed very smooth. And since the rollers are fixed directly on the printer case and the bed is small, you get a very stable printing bed. Now let's talk a bit about the nozzle. First of all, this printer has a 0.4 nozzle output, which is the size that I usually use. But this is not the usual brass nozzle with aluminum heated block as in other printers. This machine has a nozzle module block, with the heating element and temperature sensor already inside this black part. We have these four connectors that will go to the main board. The material of this block is not plastic and I don't really know what it is, but I know one thing, it is a very good temperature insulating material, since the nozzle inside will get really hot, but the material cover won't. You could even touch it while printing and you won't get burned, and that is a very safe feature. Besides, if you look at the printer while printing, the nozzle is well hidden inside there, so if you have kids, this would be quite safe. A bad thing about this nozzle is that if you broke it, you have to buy a new one and they cost like $17, which is not that much. Anyway, you get a spare part included in the kit, so no worries. The nozzle gets hot quite fast, as we can see here on the screen, which by the way, it's a quite responsive screen. It looks very cheap, but I had no problems using it. It will detect my finger anytime. I really like the menu. It's straightforward with nice design separated into parts for control, printing or internal setup. On the back of the printer we have the main 12V input plug, USB connector and the SD card input for external prints. The extrusion system is here on the back and all you have to do is to press this lever and insert the filament. You can see the motor and extrusion gears because they are covered with the printer case in order to make it look good and that's a nice thing, but I'm a fan of DIY printer kits and be able to always see the parts, change any component or wire and be able to make any changes anytime. But if you want a good looking product where you can't see much of the internal components, this is a good choice due to its price and size and because it's so good looking. The X axis is moving along these two smooth rods and the entire extruder is inside this case where we could also see a cooling fan and pretty much all the parts are covered by some plastic part or the printer metal case, so I guess that this printer is not that hackable or ready for upgrades. But I like the design and the GE Tech logo and I also like the white color. Now let's see this Wi-Fi feature and how it works. We go to the Wi-Fi settings on the menu and enable the Wi-Fi connection. Now press set in order to select a new wireless LAN. Stay in this menu till we configure the connection. Now we should download and install EasyPrint 3D app on our smartphone. Open the app and select print. Here click Wi-Fi and select next and make sure you connect to the printer Wi-Fi. Once you are connected, go back to the app and add the name of your home Wi-Fi and the password and you should be good to go. 
The next thing is to create an account and log in. And finally, scan the barcode of your printer and pair with it. Done! We could now control the printer with Wi-Fi connection. Pretty nice, right? I'm quite sure that I will never use this Wi-Fi option, but that's just me. I'm sure there are people who will be happy to have this option and see the printing process with a wireless connection even when you are not home. So everything is moving smooth, it prints great just out of the box and is very compact and we also have the Wi-Fi and touchscreen extra nice things about this printer. Let's now open it up and see what's inside. We can see the main board, which works with an ARM STM32 microcontroller. This small module here is the Wi-Fi module, connected to the serial communication pins of the board and that's how it receives wireless data. Since there is no heated bed, there is no need for external MOSFET. The printer uses the usual step motor drivers with these small blue heat sinks on top of each one. Here we have the input protection from the 12V plug that goes to the on and off button and that's how the printer is powered. Here we have the Y-axis step motor and the Z-axis motor. Finally, we have a cooling fan and that's it. Let's close back the case. The X-axis motor is inside there, very difficult to see. The end stop for the Y axis is here beneath the printing bed and the X end stop is here at the end of the arm. Now one thing I'm not happy with is this wire here that sometimes hits the plastic part so for bigger prints that might be a problem. Ok so I guess there is not much more to say about this printer just give my final opinion. First of all it's not my type of printer. I'm a huge fan of DIY kits because I love assembling them and I love having problems and solving those problems. But this printer is perfect for those who are not into mechanical stuff or solving wiring or electrical problems and only need a good printer for their prototypes. It is perfect for office or classroom work, for small prints and it's great that you could use it directly from the box. It is very good looking and fits on any desk, even it's a workshop table or your home desk. I like the fact that the bed is very stable, even it has no heated bed. Also, all the axes are moving smooth, resulting into very good quality printing. It is very easy and fast to calibrate and start printing. I'm no fan of the Wi-Fi printing, but hey, it's a nice thing to have. In my opinion, it's a safe printer, everything is well covered and all the electrical parts are inside of the metal case. Besides, there's no high voltage, since the main input for this printer are 12 volts. You can use it with both USB printing and SD card. As for the parts quality, well, the case is made out of metal, but there are also thin plastic covers. The main board is the same as in many printers, and the same goes for the step motors. So I guess it's the same Chinese quality for all the parts, but that never gave me problems till now. I really love the touchscreen. It is so easy to use and fast compared with the knob or button menu on other printers. As for things you might not like, well, not having a heated bed will limit your prints to materials that won't need a heated surface. I don't usually use ABS so that's not a problem for me. Besides, the print volume is not that big, but almost all of my useful prints are below 13 by 13 cm, so I guess that's not a big problem. As for personal opinion, the fact that you're not able to see all the components and easily change any damaged part, well, I don't really like that. But I know a lot of people that are not that much into electronics will prefer this kind of printer. If you want a reference about its size, I could fit this entire printer on the bed of my Creality CR10. But despite of that, I like it. It is so good looking and prints perfect, so I have no complaints. As for the price, using the coupon below you could get this printer for around 190 euros, which I guess it's a fair price. 
so check the links and coupons that I've prepared for you below for the best price. If you want a compact and good looking printer that also prints easy and with nice quality, I recommend you this new GE Tech model and I hope that you enjoyed this small review about it. If you would like to help my projects, I have a Patreon campaign. The link is down below. I will really appreciate that guys. Also check all the links for more printers in the description below and some coupons for you that will also help my workshop. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this printer or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.